get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feel great. Welcome, everyone, to this week's edition of Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. I am your host for today, Dr. Wanda Lee McPhee. And with me is Dr. Jessica Dietrich Marsh, who is celebrating 21 years of assisting patients in natural healing through chiropractic and nutritional care. When she was originally pursuing a degree in pre-med, Dr. Jessica was in a life-changing car accident that would ultimately redefine her view of health care. After rigorous chiropractic care, not only did Dr. Jessica see a massive structural healing, but she also realized her lifelong struggle with asthma, migraines, and allergies had completely ceased in the process. Ten years later, after having significant health scare with her second child, Dr. Jessica knew without a doubt she would not holistically or comprehensively help patients without integrating nutrition also into her practice. So in order to achieve your fullest, healthiest potential, striking a balance of structure, nutrition, environment, and emotion is a message that Dr. Jessica feels empowered to share with the world and obviously is in keeping with our message here at the Center for Epigenetic Expression and Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. So welcome today, Dr. Jessica. Oh, thank you. I'm so honored to be here with you guys. Well, let's start with a little bit about you. Um, How did you get started in chiropractic? We saw a little bit about your car accident, but how did that change your life? I was uh, pre-med at Ohio State, and I had honestly never even heard of chiropractic at all. And I had had just migraines forever, and my roommate had walked into the room, and it was one of those days where I was tapping my head on the desk, Um, because the force of the head tapping actually felt better than the migraine, which is so bizarre to me now. And she walked in and she's like, why don't we go see my chiropractor? And I'm like, I don't even know what that is, but it was a moment of desperation. My head was killing me. And I went and the headache broke. And I was like, well, that was cute. That was awesome. I like that. And in my mind, I just attributed it to, well, that's an aspirin. That's a Tylenol. That that broke the headache. There was really nothing more to it than that. And then about three months later, um, I got involved into a pretty serious car accident. And it was called Death Junction because pretty much people died in that junction. Um, But I guess God had a plan for me because I'd crossed five lanes of traffic sideways during rush hour. Uh, The people stopped, said it was like a movie. Everybody just let me pass. And the result of that was I had had a severe lateral whiplash, both left and right, from being hitting, being hit on both sides, and um, could not move my right arm at all. And that was a really big problem for me because my goal was to be a thoracic surgeon, and if you don't have use of your right arm, that makes it difficult. So nothing was really working that they were suggesting to me, and, and the pills were just making me really loopy. So I went back to the chiropractor and I was like, well, you you know, you did that really great thing with my headache. So do you think you can fix this arm? And looking back, I was such the awful patient. Uh, (laughs) I laugh about it to this day. And it actually took nine months with him of adjusting my wrist, my elbow, my shoulder, my neck. And in that time, I just saw amazing things changing within my body, within my health, with my sleep with my mood, as, as you mentioned, my allergies went away, my asthma went away, my sinus infections went away. I was on a, an antibiotic pretty much every other month. Didn't need that from day one of, of starting under care with him regularly. And at the end of it all, um, it was like a light switch. My arm, just one day I woke up and it didn't hurt, it didn't tremor, it just was perfect. And I went back into him, I'm like, this is fantastic. And he just looked at me and he goes, you know, you're going to make a great doctor. Have you ever thought about fixing people before they ever had to have surgery? And it was just a light bulb for me. And within three months, I had applied to Palmer College of Chiropractic and was there by the end of the year. So it was just a really fantastic um, transition for me. And I've, I've loved every 21 years of it so far. That is a great story. And so many people, I think, start their journey in chiropractic with a particular pain problem or a specific complaint. And it's so nice to hear someone who's kind of come through that and realized how much more there is to their chiropractic care, to their structure and their function than just, like you said, getting rid of the headache. So that's amazing. Now, Dr. Jessica, I also know that you are a busy mom, four kids and a farm. Um, 
And that's had quite an impact on your journey into healthcare and, and seeing healthcare from a holistic point of view. And of course, from a family point of view, a lot of our listeners are family oriented as well. So tell me a little bit about how this really works for your family. Well, about five years into my practice, my, my second daughter, we, we had a, what I thought was appendicitis, although I couldn't figure out why she, w- she had appendicitis. She was about five years old. And uh, I'm rushing her to the emergency room, which is hard because as a mom who fixes everything, not being able to fix your daughter is just gut-wrenching. And uh, once we got to the hospital, their, their first indication was, yes, you're correct, it's, it's appendicitis, and they started pulling lab work. And over about a four-hour period of time, we went from appendicitis to leukemia. And over another two-hour period of time, we went from leukemia to a genetic blood disorder that mimics um, leukemia at first at first glance. And where I went from, I'm not happy about appendicitis, to I'm terrified of my child having leukemia, to holy crap, now you're telling me she's got this genetic blood disorder that she's going to be dead at 18. Um, was not a good night, <laughs> no, to say, to say the least. And um, we we ended up being put into the oncology department because oncologists are the ones that deal with with this type of disorder. And through even more genetic testing with them, there's a major and there's a minor, and 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 Emily ends up being a blend of both major and minor. So she was supposed to have had um, all the signs and symptoms of majors, which meant she would have blood transfusions, significant amount of blood transfusions per year because her body wouldn't be able to hold um, the the anemia herself. There would be growth disorders, there would be facial issues, bone issues, intelligence issues. Um, Throughout the the transfusions, they were preparing me for her to catch another disease um, through the blood transfer and how to manage that. Um, She would lose her spleen. I mean, the the way the oncologist pretty much laid out our life was pretty horrendous. And he said, but the good news is she's not going to die. And I'm like, but what life have you just given her? This is, this is horrible. And coming from the chiropractic background where the body's beautifully, wonderfully made, there's something that we can support. There's some aspect that we can help. That's what I was pleading with this oncologist about. Just give me one, one of these things that you have just, Told me about my daughter that I can make better for her and he leaned over and he patted my knee and he said this is all genetic I'm just here to prepare you and um, my husband knew at that moment we needed to leave and so he was very gracious in getting me out of there without me blowing my top and uh, we got out to the car and I was just like dumbfounded because it's it, when you're faced with a doctor who's telling you that your child's life is is going to be miserable and painful and and sick and you come from a profession where you help people leave that there's a lot of rage and a lot of disconnect that can occur really fast Absolutely. and we started to research and my my husband's statement was you and I both know we can do something but they don't have the answer so we can't look there and we can't be there for them to help us. We have to we have to do this on our own. And I literally went from about 1850 to 1950. My thought processes was modern medicine started in the 50s. So what it how they take care of this before then? And what we found was a tremendous amount of information, a tremendous amount of the endocrinology books um, pre 1950 have almost identical information in it today. But how they treat it was radically different. They treated everything with food and exercise and with thought processes and, and emotions and, and, and controlling emotions through exercise. And it was absolutely mind-boggling to me because it's so aligned with the chiropractic philosophy. And so we just took a good hard look at everything that affected that child. Food, um, perfumes, cleaning supplies, uh, toxic people. We started gauging how she physically looked with big black dark circles under her eyes versus not having dark circles under her eyes, her mood, her attitude, when she was calm, when she wasn't calm. And through that developed the system for her that we had to eliminate all corn, soy, and wheat. 
And then my mind didn't stop there. Why did we have to eliminate that? And then come to find out between 1980 and 2000, in America, all of that became genetically modified or genetically engineered. So here her symptom was limping along because her blood, her blood just couldn't hold oxygen real well. And I wasn't feeding her anything that helped. I was feeding her things that was actually damaging and taking more of her energy away when she didn't have energy to begin with. And so that's how we just really started to look at everything that affected her. Did it give her life or did it give her a burden? And when we started removing her burdens, what we started to see was her body was able to express itself fully. And within three months, she was not anemic, which is what they told us would not happen. And fast forward 11 years, and actually 12 now, she turns 17 this month, um, we have not had one genetic expression of her disease process. So she has not had a blood transfusion. She has not caught any diseases. She has not had any bone growth. She's not had any intelligence issues. Her face is gorgeous. So there was not one aspect of what he told me to prepare for that we've experienced. And through all of that, I've learned they have a name for that, and it's called epigenetics. And it's what you think, what you eat, where you live, what you experience can influence positively and negatively the genetic code you've been blessed with. And so that, of course, rocked our world. And it, it started to translate over to our patient base who started coming in with different diagnoses that were also extremely scary from, from you know, neurologists and oncologists and and I just would look at them and say, hey, I don't know if this will work for you, but this worked for us. And when you're faced with a hopeless situation, y you try some pretty radical things. And we just really hardcore started pouring into these patients how to change their lives, how to change how they thought about their bodies, how to change how they thought about their disease process, what blessings would they get out of it how to change their food sources, how to find food sources, which then led to us moving to a farm so we could create some of those food sources. Um, and what we started to see was that the body healed itself and these genetic things that they were being told they were going to die with don't exist anymore. And uh, it, it just has been an amazing process to see people taking their power back and their health back and not living in fear, which is a fantastic job to go to every day. Absolutely. And it's so, I mean, the title of our podcast, of course, Beyond Your Wildest Genes, ties into that perfectly. It, it isn't about what's in your genes. It's about what you do beyond them. Um, and it's a bit of a play on Beyond Your Wildest Dreams because it is so much about what you create for yourself um, in terms of health and, and lifestyle. And so many parents just don't even know where to start. It's a blessing for your daughter that you had that education and that orientation to even know where to begin to find the answers and to be able to impact now hundreds and thousands of millions of people around the world in, in enabling them to get the help that they need and the answers that they're looking for. Um, and you structure it very similarly in some ways to how we've done it here you have a four pillar of health um, model, structural, nutritional, environmental, and emotional. Um, nutritional and environmental, we've lumped together and called sort of chemical, internal and external. Um, do you think that of those four pillars, there's one that is sort of supersedes the rest or are they all equally or differently impactful? Um, it really depends on the person. And that's what makes my job so fun is, is, yes, there's a basic plan that I will teach you, but each individual is a little bit different. And m a lot of this even further got flushed out when my husband uh, decided he was going to go up on our roof and check some work that a worker had done on, on by himself. And the ladder uh, jumped, and he fell 20 feet onto his head. And so... Um, he, I was at work, he was home and took himself to the hospital and called me on his way home after they had stitched him up and uh, I, I'd asked him, hey, did they check you for a concussion? Are you, are you okay? Well, he was fully concussed and no, they didn't and um, we did everything wrong for a concussion because I didn't know much more than, hey, did they check you for a concussion to really look for at that moment. And 
with him, what we noticed within six months was some pretty significant behavioral changes, um, depression, anxiety, anger, and a lot of forgetfulness. My husband is absolutely brilliant and would forget what you had just said to him, would would walk into a room and you could see the, the panic and the fear in his face. Um, it was really kind of a, a dark, scary time for him and and for us too, because we didn't know what was going what was going on with that, and why our just loving, patient husband, spouse, father had had really become something different. And as as life sometimes presents you, uh, a friend had had invited me to come hear this speaker um, talk on brain injuries, and I was like, well, that's fascinating. Maybe I can figure something out. And what I learned from him on concussions is how the concussions um, and and the gut, the head and the gut are intimately tied together. And here we had been eating beautifully at this point for six years, um, but that injury was enough to disrupt the gut and within six months cause these psychological components to occur. And that was a whole new avenue of, of exploration for us on how your mindset can be a little bit out of your control if there's an injury that has occurred. And that, um, so for me, that really turned into a lot more in-depth uh, brain balancing work in my office. And then also, how do the emotions play into that? If you're left brain, you're, you tend to have one side of emotions that is very analytical and very kind of in the closet. And I'll put this up and I'm not going to deal with this right now. And if you tend to be a little more right brain and you have an injury, then you tend to be a little more you know, it's hysterical, out of control, and I'm using very random swings of of emotional stability. But um, when we started to really look in depth in that aspect of it and start healing the brain and the gut connection, what we really started to find is, is people's emotional patterns disappeared so quickly. And that was the aspect that in our, in our care was taking me forever. And we were bringing on all these resources and you know, helping people, you know, well, let's, let's look at what Tony Robbins does and let's look at, you know, dream boards and let's look at where these emotional patterns came from. And when we actually started looking at the brain gut connection, and then if the person had um, injuries, even mild concussions, and we started treating that, we saw a lot of these emotional statuses disappear and people were able to think clearer. And then we had to teach them how to, how to deal with with that, right? Because now we have a new emotional pattern in the house, and of course, spouses and family have to have to now adapt to that. So that's been a really super aspect, um, unexpected aspect in our office um, is is to how to teach people to think clearly once they're healthy. Um, and that I think has really, at this point in my career, um, taken on a, a larger aspect in our office. Uh, because when when we look at how the body is wired, the brain is is wired to keep you alive, no matter what. And what we don't realize is that there's internal sources of alerts and there's external sources of alerts. And we've really only been taught about the external sources. So we don't know that when we eat a food that's got a chemical in it, that it actually alerts the brain that there's damage. Or if we, if we use Clorox or some sort of bleaching system in the shower... Um, that causes some thyroid damage, and that can cause the brain to alert to there's a problem. There's perfumes that use petroleum, and you spray your body down with perfumes or aftershave, and that alerts the body that there's damage on a cellular level. So we, we're now all walking around ready to take somebody out because we're so in a state of, of fight or flight and don't realize how that affects our emotions and our relationships and, and, and our ability to relax and give love. So that's been a really fun aspect is just teaching people how to train their bodies to get out of that stress response. That is really amazing, actually. And that's some practical um, ideas for our listeners. I mean, you've already mentioned the GMO thing in passing. I think that's obviously a, a big topic right now and certainly a place where a lot more attention is starting to be brought. Um, we know that the chemicals that we eat have an impact but the chemicals that we put on our body also have a significant impact. So those are two places that people can make immediate changes for themselves in how their body's acting and reacting. Exactly. And that's a big part that people don't, don't really realize about 
is when when we're looking at at brain, the limbic portion of our brain is activated within seconds of of a smell. So there's where you know the the, the perfume companies will use that, and they will mimic hormones. And they will they will mimic smells that activate that brain, but because it's not natural, because it's being made out of petroleum and other chemicals, it does activate our brain to like it, but then it activates the limbic brain that there's something wrong. So brain chemistry has become just this fascinating little little hobby and how brain chemistry is manipulated by the food industry, by the beauty industry. Um And how it actually can affect hormones right now in the States, Canada may be a little bit different, but in the States, um, we can put fake estrogen in over-the-counter products, beauty products, and not even put it on the label. So here women are putting, you know, a a dose of estrogen on their face, which is radically changing their fertility levels, radically changing their emotional statuses. And, And what we have found out through history is that estrogen originally was a hormone of shock and stress. So when we have an excess of estrogen, we're actually putting our body into a stress response, which would explain the research out there that shows, you know, an increase in cancer and things of that nature when we use synthetic estrogens long term. So, um there's where we just really, really talk to our patients about questioning everything that you've done out of habit. Look at your makeups. Take another step and, and get something natural. Look at your perfumes. Use something different. Um, look at the foods that are coming into your house. I mean, I loved raviolis growing up, and I bought my kids raviolis, and one day I just was like, I'm going to look at this label. And it's nothing real anymore. It's all synthetic and, and food colorings and food additives. Um, and that's the biggest issue, I think, facing our country and, and, and I'm sure everywhere that allows for GMO and, and synthetic ingredients to come into their food sources is that food is not safe right now. You've got, you've got to look at it differently. Um, and that's, that's the hardest hurdle, I think. Once people get over that hurdle, everything else is easy. Yeah, that can be a bit of a stumbling block, you know, for for people who have traditionally and habitually maybe eaten a certain way or or prepared food a certain way or not prepared food, which is the case maybe. But um, but once they do try it, they realize just how easy it is. It's it's almost like it was a boogeyman and it wasn't real, but it created so much fear that they wouldn't be able to do it or they wouldn't have time or they wouldn't be able to find the right resources. Uh, We are living in a time right now where this is a fairly top of mind idea for a lot of people and the resources are all around us. Oh yeah. We, you know, this weekend I ran into one of my, one of my first patients that moved away and she, she was unique because she actually came to me already doing all the food. So she was my first one ever that I started in on this and she's like, no, I got that. I'm I'm ready for the next level. I'm here for the next level. And we used to order in by bulk because there was no grocery stores that did things um, nutritionally like we like we have now. I mean, fast forward in my neighborhood, within 15 minutes, I have four health food stores I can go to, but they, they weren't there five years ago. Um, one of the things that we've been having a lot of fun with, and it's brand new, it's, it's called an Instapot. And this has been changing. Um, it's a pressure cooker, and it's been changing uh, how we, how fast we can bring really nutritious meals to the table. And that is so key for me. As you mentioned, I have four children. Three of them are at home. One's in college. Um, We have a farm. We have farm animals. Um, My husband just started med school, so he's out. There's there's nothing he has responsibility-wise right now, so I'm kind of a, a single mom on top of it right now. And food, you know, he was this amazing cook, and he loved to cook, and he was my stay at home dad. So he would, you know, it wouldn't be a problem for him to cook for an hour for lunch or an hour for dinner. And I don't have that. And so this Instapot has been amazing because I can bring things to the table in 20 minutes. Um, So that's, I really encourage people. There's a bunch of free um, recipe books online right now, and it's on sale on Amazon. But really look into it if you're looking to bring some nutritious meals to the table in in a small amount of time. That is an amazing tip. Um, so we've got a couple minutes left. Any sort of key message or key hints or key add-ons that you want to bring to our listeners in these last few minutes? You know, I just encourage everybody to realize how powerful they are and how 
beautifully they are made and listen to what your body is is telling you and and don't accept somebody's you know because they have a position of authority because they're a doctor and you've been taught to listen to doctors don't accept anybody's diagnosis for you allow yourself to listen to what your body's telling you and make changes and constantly make changes until you get the response you need and i tell my patients the only consistent in life is change and you're never you're never arrived it's never like you've crossed that finish line of health and you're like okay here it is i'm done but it's and it gets easier with every step you make because your body responds and it thanks you and now you have more energy and now you're sleeping better and now your mood's better but i really continue to do to find the answers for you and your answer may be different than your neighbor's answer or your sister's answer or somebody else's in your family listen to these podcasts listen to the doctors that are doing it that are changing it and uh just don't give up hope because it it's it's an amazing other side that is absolutely brilliant no better way that we can have ended this week's podcast uh thanks to everyone for listening to us once again you're listening to Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast, and uh, I'm Dr. Wanda Lee McPhee, your host for today, and with me was Dr. Jessica Dietrich March. Thank you very much, Dr. Jessica, for joining with us, and we hope everyone will pass this on to a friend, someone who needs to hear the message as well. Thanks for being with us. <laughs>